Joining us on this edition of the uh, News Review, you have political scientist Heinz Gartner, uh, also from the International Institute for Peace, IIP, joining us from Vienna. And we also have publisher and editor of Politics First, Marcus Papadopoulos, uh, who's with us from the British capital, London. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Uh, Heinz Gardner, uh, the Iranian president is pointing out pretty much what all the other permanent members of the Security Council are stating as well, that uh, the United States uh, has uh, waived its rights of using anything in uh, the Iran nuclear deal known as the J JCPOA when it unilaterally left it. Tell us more, please. Uh, yes, it's all too obvious um, that the United States and uh, especially President Trump wants to terminate uh, the JCPOA and it is using all uh, tools uh, which it believes are available and one of those tools eventually would be the snapback uh, mechanism uh, of course, uh, the U.S. Uh, left uh, the GCPOA in uh, 2018, and it does not participate in the GCPOA and its mechanism anymore. So it is not entitled uh, to use any mechanism uh, uh, provided by the uh, GCPOA. So it's all for uh, political reasons. And uh, the Europeans should be vigilant that they are not be used or abused uh, for this purpose. But still, the Europeans, and especially the European participants to the uh, GCPOA, are still uh, want to save uh, the uh, GCPOA. And uh, so they have to op uh, oppose this move uh, by, by the United States. And there are several ways to do it. One is not. Uh, to participate in any uh, UN Security Council uh, uh, meeting, uh, and uh, they just can ignore the U.S. Uh, initiative. But they also can say that the U.S. is not a uh, participant anymore, and uh, in order to activate the uh, dispute sec settlement mechanism, you have to go to several stages, as foreseen in the article, uh, 36 and 37 uh, of the uh, GCPOA, and um, the U.S. is just uh, jumping to Article 37 and says now we have given the mechanism within 30 days. Uh, we have to see, we, it will be referred to UN Security Council. Uh, no, that's not possible. It has to go to several stages before, and Article 36 says it has uh, to uh, go to the Joint Commission uh, first, then involving the foreign ministers, uh, probably the advisory board, and that will take another uh, 30 to 40 days before the U.S. tries to activate this mechanism. So it's, it's all wrong, it's hypo hypocrisy, it's uh, political obvious, uh, and the Europeans should not yield to this pressure. Even so, I have to say the U.S. will put individual pressure to uh, the uh, countries uh, bilateral, uh, in its bilateral relations, uh, threaten them with sanctions uh, if they don't uh, agree to this, uh, to their uh, initiative to bring back the snapback uh, mechanism on their own. Marcus Papadopoulos, is what the United States insisting on even legal at this point? Absolutely not. No, the Americans have no legal standing under international law. And indeed, they have no moral standing whatsoever as well. And I most certainly agree with President Rouhani in his description of the latest American attempts vis-a-vis uh, -vis Iran uh, when he describes the actions as infantile. But I would also add to that the attempts by the Americans really do demonstrate a level of desperation, sheer desperation, because Washington has so far failed to scupper the JCPOA by undermining it through the use of the British, the French and the Germans. And on top of that, the Americans recently failed in their endeavor to extend the conventional arms embargo on Iran. Indeed, at the United Nations, not even America's strategic allies, such as France and Germany, supported Washington um, in its attempt to once again attack the Iranian state. 
So I think there is a level of desperation in Washington that um, its uh, efforts to weaken Iran um, are failing. You know, we can say at the same time that for over 41 years, uh, the Americans have failed in numerous attempts to destroy the Iranian revolution and to overthrow the Iranian authorities. And I believe that um, sooner rather than later, policymakers in Washington will realize that it is futile trying to weaken Iran by scuppering the JCPOA because the Europeans are not budging in their steadfast commitments to the JCPOA. And indeed at the United Nations, when it came to, as I said, extending the arms embargo on Iran, not even America's closest allies supported it. So I think the Americans will, um, at some point in the near future, look to alternative methods to try and weaken Iran. And I would cite one uh, as being Iran's relationship with China, because uh, the American Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, has alleged that Iran's supreme ruler, Khamenei, um, is not a true Muslim because he is silent on what the West is alleging to be China's persecution of Muslims in its Xinjiang province. Now, that is a, that is a blatant attempt by the Americans to cause a wedge between Tehran and Beijing. And remember, China and uh, Iran have a very close relationship. They have a very productive uh, partnership. So I think the Americans may now look to um, trying to de uh, destabilize the Iranian-Chinese relationship, which won't work. And I might add as well that American and British allegations okay. that uh, the Chinese are persecuting the Muslim population of Xinjiang is an absolute fabrication. It is a malicious lie. The people the Chinese authorities are fighting in Xinjiang are al Qaeda. Right, let's, not, uh, uh, let's not average too far away from the topic right now. Let's go back to uh, Heinz Gartner. Um, the United States has been uh, turned down twice at uh, the United Nations Security Council right now. How isolated is it when it comes to its Iran policy at the moment? Uh, to me, it was a surprise um, that only two uh, member states of the Security Council uh, supported the UN resolution to extend the arms embargo against uh, Iran. Uh, all, uh, so there was not surprise that uh, China and Russia voted against it, but it was surprised that all European member states, uh, two permanent members, of course, France and Great Britain, but also the other European Security Council members, uh, uh, abstained. Uh, that means that uh, Europeans are becoming more uh, skeptical towards the uh, US-Iran uh, uh, policy. However, that does not mean uh, that the Europeans automatically side uh, with Iran. So the Europeans uh, uh, are expecting Iran to uh, return to uh, its commitments under the GCPA because the Iran step by step, of course, under the uh, mechanism of the GCPA, but step, step by step reduced its uh, commitment to the, to the GCPA. So if Joe Biden uh, might be elected president uh, in uh, November and uh, he promised uh, to return to the GCP maybe with some uh, adjustments and the Europeans um, support still the GCPOA, the Iranians should help Biden and the Europeans in order to show willingness to uh, abide uh, to the GCPA uh, fully. Uh, so it's return to full commitment. Uh, so that would be possibility that uh, the GCPA might not die. May I have to add another thing? So of course, the Europeans now have to revive the instex mechanism, which uh, bypasses uh, Iranian, uh, uh, American secondary sanctions on Europe if they do business uh, with Iran. There's still a possibility. And uh, the Europeans have a very assertive a position against the uh, uh, US uh, criticism of the Nord Stream energy pipeline. Why shouldn't you do the, the same uh, criticism and be the same assertive uh, uh, towards uh, uh, 
uh, the U.S. concerning the GCPOA. Okay, thanks a lot. Heinz Gardner joining us from Vienna. Also, thanks to Marcus Papadopoulos joining us from the British capital, London. With that, it brings us to an end here on this edition of the News Review. Do stay tuned. There's plenty more to come here on Press TV. Bye for now.